hi guys welcome back to my channel today we'll be discussing the night shift part of being a junior doctor basically is working night shifts right now it's uh, become part of my uh, usual routine every six days it's ingrained in my mind that i'm gonna get a night shift so every six days usually we work night shifts we have a duty what we call a duty the night shift usually starts at around uh, 2 30 pm going on till around 8 30 pm and from there we divide the night into shifts so the shift usually starts at around 8 30 till 11 30 pm then we have another shift between 11 30 to 2 30 in the morning and from 2 30 in the morning to around 5 30 in the morning we again have another shift so basically the shifts are divided into three they're usually A, B, C shifts and uh, you work depending on what you are going to be on call. So you can either be working an A shift, a B shift or a C shift. Usually before the night shift starts, we're usually working on our daily wards. We're carrying out ward rounds and the usual stuff, taking blood, booking stuff like for example booking a CT scan or vetting a CT scan or vetting and booking ECGs or chest x-rays. And from there you move on to your wards which you will be covering during the night shift and these wards usually you a house officer usually covers around two wards or three wards at a time on the wards basically you will be chasing bloods booking ecgs booking bloods booking uh, for example urines booking urine labels you also be doing cannulations for example where we basically we give patients fluids and antibiotics from the intravenous cannula we also take urgent bloods when they are needed for example you might take a troponin or an urgent d-dimer when you suspect for example a chest pain or a pulmonary embolism and uh, we also book for example urgent CTs when a patient presents with for example loss of consciousness falls or when there is a clinical identified risk that there might be a bleed in the brain, for example a CVA. So most of the time as a junior doctor you will be covering the wards as a team. Usually on call there is an FY1 or an FY2 which is basically in the UK a senior house officer. And then you have the other senior members of staff, for example the BSTs, the HSTs, the um, resident specialists etc etc. So the more senior members of staff are usually going to be paged after the more basic stuff for example the FY1s and the FY2s when you're paged on a call usually the nurses send you a bleep or a page when there's need to either see a patient or you want to chase a specific blood for example a renal profile is a common blood which you guys will be chasing on the ward when a renal profile is abnormal you might get for example hypokalemias or hyperkalemias you might get hyponatremia and abnormalities on the kidney function, for example, AKIs. These are all common scenarios, especially on the night shift calls. Other things you might get leave for, for example, include taking warfarin doses, writing warfarin doses, prescribing diametics, okay, pain medication like petidine, like um, omeprazole, uh, like codeine, antiemetics are common, for example, on Dancetron, etc. You might also be um, called to prescribe medication, especially if the patient is in pain or if the patient is nauseous and maybe, for example, has a high INR, you might give, for example, vitamin K and uh, you might be paged also to review patients, of course, and to take blood. Most of the time, after your shift finishes, you get some time, of course, to rest and to sleep. Usually, unfortunately, being part of a busy night shift, you, you don't really get to sleep much. You might sleep one or two hours at night, or maybe three. If you're lucky, you might get five. If you're lucky, sometimes, yeah. If the night is quiet, you might get five hours. However, it, in winter and uh, in summer, when there's peak season, this is not the case. Most of the times, it's quite busy and uh, yeah, you don't get to sleep much. So for one night in six, your sleep routine is usually disrupted. <laughs> and, and I think after working uh, one year doing night shifts, I feel like I aged uh, 50 years or more, you know? Uh, anyway, uh, that's the side effect of doing night shifts. What common scenarios you might get whilst doing night shifts? So, common scenarios you might get when doing a night shift include 
Um, as I said before, hypotensions, you might get abnormalities of renal function and electrolyte imbalances, which are very common if you have patients bleeding, patients vomiting, patients who have intra-abdominal bleeds, especially on surgical wards or post-surgical patients. You might get, for example, a common one is hyponatremia and hypokalemia or hyperkalemia. In this case, you would usually tend to book an ECG, check again the renal profile, you want to take an urgent VBG. You would also, for example, go to check the patient directly, clinically examine the patient and notice anything which might be worrying you and might increase the risk of, uh, of harm to the patient. So you as an on-call doctor's main job is to reduce harm to the patient during your 24 hours on call. So, of course, hospitals are busy places, people have lives, people finish work, they go home, and the hospital can't have no stuff. So, during the night, you're gonna have a team, usually, who takes care of the patients and takes care that these patients are safe and there are no major issues with regards to their clinical treatment. Now, after a night shift, usually we tend to start our ward work again. We go on to make our usual ward round census. We check the list of patients which have been admitted and those which have been, which are ready to be discharged or have been discharged already. We check the patient's bloods, we trend the bloods, we see that there's no changes in the blood which might indicate we need to treat them urgently. And we see that the patients are usually stable and the parameters are with, well within normal limits. After that, usually we start off the usual ward rounds where we meet as a team of doctors, we go around the ward round, we see that everyone is doing well, we write our clinical stuff basically. And after the ward round, uh, of course, usually you go back home, you, you rest after such a night shift and try to get some decent sleep and eat a healthy meal, possibly to elevate all the stress you had during the night with all that cortisol going up. Uh, me, personally, after a night shift, I tend to go to the gym. I try sometimes to uh, go to the gym to release the stress, you know, get the blood flowing, get some weights going, you know and uh, start off a new day with a positive attitude. I think that's it guys regarding night shifts. Uh, thanks for watching the video, subscribe to my channel. Um, uh, see you next time guys, cheers.